This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Hi, I'm Pastor Del Scheel. Welcome to the online worship service for Our Savior Lutheran Church in Nicomas, Florida. On the 3rd of May, 2020, this is the fourth Sunday of Easter. Uh, and a couple of announcements. First of all, it is our prayer to reopen the church building for worship on Sunday, June the 14th. Meanwhile, I thank you for joining us for our on online worship service, and I encourage you to check out the email messages that are coming out from the church to members and friends. That way you can keep current with uh, church announcements and with prayer concerns. I invite you now to take a moment to prepare your heart and mind for worship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. At this time, we're going to do something we haven't been doing during our worship services. We will continue with the confession and forgiveness. I will say the confession, pause to give you time to repeat what I say, and then I will continue. Please repeat after me. O oh God, our Heavenly Father, I confess to you that I have sinned against you in many ways. I repent of my sins and I ask you to forgive me for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, has had mercy upon us. And for the sake of the sufferings, death, and resurrection of his dear Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, does forgive us all our sins. As I called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. O God, our shepherd, you know your sheep by name, and lead us to safety through the valleys of death. Guide us by your voice that we may walk in certainty and security to the joyous feast prepared in your house through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. At this time, we will continue with the reading with John Klein. Good morning. Today's reading is the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. You restore my soul, O Lord, and guide me along right pathways for your name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We continue with the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus uses an image familiar to the people of his day to make a point about spiritual leadership. Good shepherds bring people to life through Jesus, but those who avoid Jesus are dangerous to the flock. John 10, verses 1 through 10. Jesus said, Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, 
and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We continue with the sermon. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Traditionally, today is known as the Good Shepherd Sunday. Our readings for today include both Psalm 23 and John 10. Both readings remind us that Jesus is the Good Shepherd. Jesus says that those who follow him those who belong to him, hear his voice. What are we to make of life when we don't? When all we hear is silence? Or when all we hear are other voices, voices other than those of the Good Shepherd? What are we to do when God's word is contradicted by our experience? A man was having difficulty communicating with his wife, and he concluded that she was becoming hard of hearing. So he decided to conduct a test without telling her. He sat in a chair on the far side of the room. There, her back was to him, so she could not see him, and very quietly he whispered, can you hear me? No response. Moving a little closer, he asked again, can you hear me now? Still no reply. Quietly, he edged closer and whispered the same words, but still no answer. Finally, he moved right behind her chair and said, can you hear me now? <laughs> to his surprise and chagrin, she responded with irritation in her voice for the fourth time. Yes, I can hear you. It's so typical that we blame our communication problems on others. We're quick to assume that if there's a communication problem, it's because either others aren't listening or they aren't speaking clearly. But what if the problem isn't with others? What if the problem is with us? There's nothing unusual about the feeling that God isn't listening or that God is somewhere else attending to someone else's problems and ignoring us. But feelings, feelings can sometimes deceive us, can't they? It's easy enough to believe that those who hear Jesus have it good. Those who hear his voice can joyfully and securely go out into the world and do God's will. But it's just as easy to ask, what about me? What about those days, those months, those years in my life when life is a fog and nothing is clear except my unhappiness, my illness, my isolation, my confusion, my sin, my worries, my disappointments, and the like. What am I to do and how am I to understand life when I don't hear the voice of a merciful God, a loving God, a trustworthy God? What am I to do then? What are you to do then? I've got three words for you. 
head for shelter. That's right, head for shelter. Go where you can expect to hear the shepherd's voice. When we don't feel connected to God, we need to take positive steps to protect ourselves. When they first began building the Golden Gate Bridge, there weren't any safety devices, and the result was that 23 men fell to their deaths. Later on, a huge net was used as a safety precaution. And afterwards, 10 men fell into it and were saved from certain death. In addition, it was determined that the workers got 25% more work done in the same amount of time after the net was installed. Why? Because that net assured the workers safety. So they were free to work on the project wholeheartedly. Something like that is involved in the Christian life. When we are in trouble, we need to seek sanctuary. We need to take advantage of God's safety net. Back in Jesus' time, shepherds would bring their sheep in from the pasture and put them in a pen or corral, along with the sheep of other shepherds. No one branded their sheep. Instead, when the shepherd returned to get his sheep to lead them back to pasture, upon recognizing the shepherd, the gatekeeper opened the gate. The shepherd would then call out for his sheep. And because the sheep recognized his voice, they would follow him through the gate. So where were the sheep while the shepherd was away? Were they out wandering about unprotected, uncared for, on their own in the world? No. They were in a place of safe keeping until the shepherd came for them. They were protected by a wall and a gate. I don't favor thinking of the church in terms of what is often referred to as a fortress mentality. That's when Christians isolate themselves from the world, writing off everyone else out there as hopeless and to be avoided. But the Bible does use images of safety and shelter over and over again. And for us Lutherans, at least once a year, we joyously sing, a mighty fortress is our God. On Easter Sunday, 1941, the City Temple Church in London was packed. None of those worshiping at this church knew this would be the last time they'd gather for a worship service in their historic church. Four days later, a mass of bombing raid by the Germans destroyed much of London, including the City Temple Church. The next Sunday, the congregation met in a rented hall. Though their property had been decimated, the streets were rampant with insecurity, and facing fear and insurmountable odds, still the congregation sang, Lead us, Heavenly Father, lead us. Commenting on this incident, someone wrote, A building belonging to the church can be destroyed, but the church cannot. It is God's possession. When the Good Shepherd seems far away, his sheep belong in a safe place. And I understand that safe place to be our church family and the promises of God in the Bible. When we feel disconnected from God and Jesus, we need to seek out other Christians and we need to spend time with God's word. And these days when the church building is closed, this means we have to get creative, email, call, Go online for worship, write letters. When Christians are in trouble, we always find sanctuary in two ways. 
We seek out other Christians, and we sit down with the Bible and set aside time for prayer and devotions. The point is, we have a good shepherd. God is at work in our lives. God is watching over us. God cares deeply about us. And we can expect to hear the voice of God calling each of us by name and leading us out into the world. Most often this happens either when we are with other Christians or when we meditate on God's word. When Jesus says, my sheep hear my voice, he reminds me of two things I need to remember about life. Number one, there is a good shepherd and I belong to him. He talks to me and he leads me. And number two is this. When my experience contradicts this fact, I need to head for shelter, head for safety. I need to go where I know my shepherd will find me and be with me and lead me once again out into the world. We may not always hear God. And when we do hear the voice of God, we may not always perfectly understand what God is saying. But it is a huge mistake to think that God is not addressing us. God is speaking. And we have the promise that we will hear his voice. I love the reminder that you can never break the promises of God by leaning on them. And I always like to add, you can always hear the promises of God when you listen to and follow Jesus. And when you can't hear his voice, don't assume the problem lies with Jesus. Make sure that you are where you need to be to hear and recognize his voice. We know these days it is not possible to get together with others, but guess what? These days provide an amazing opportunity to spend time reading your Bible and praying. When God seems a million miles away, seek the shelter of God's promises. We continue with the Apostles' Creed. With the whole church, let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always and also with you. At this time, take a moment to pray about the offering you will give to say thank you for God's goodness and to support the life and ministry of our Savior Lutheran Church in Nicomas, Florida. And for your convenience, online giving is possible from our website, oslnicomas.com. Let us pray. Be known to us, O Lord, in the breaking of the bread as you are made known to the disciples. Receive these gifts and the offering of our lives that we may be your risen body in the world. Amen. We continue with the prayers of intercession. 
rejoicing in the risen life of Christ, let us pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. After each petition, I will conclude, Lord, in your mercy, please respond. Hear our prayer. We pray for the church. Renew your church and unite us through your spirit. Send us out to serve our neighbors and to receive their care with gratitude. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer for the earth. For pastures and prairies, rivers and streams, oceans and mountains, for those who care for livestock and pets, for all animals, wild and domestic, with whom we share this world, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer for the nations. Guide leaders into the path of peace. Uphold all who govern. Protect those who risk their lives to shield others from danger. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer for those in need. For those who lack safe housing and adequate food, for workers whose pay is insufficient to meet their daily needs, for those who are now without a job, comfort the grieving and heal the sick, especially those we name at this time. Kurt, O.C., Inez, Christine, Beverly, Virginia, Hannah, David, Our Savior Lutheran Church in the Bahamas, Robert, Sue, Sarah, Jesse, and members of the support groups who normally attend meetings at Our Savior Lutheran but cannot do so now because our building is closed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With thanksgiving, we remember those who have died in faith. In your goodness and mercy, bring us to the fulfillment of your promise to dwell in your house forever. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Joining our voices with your faithful ones in every time and place, we offer our prayers in the name of the risen one, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We continue with the Lord's Prayer. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive this blessing. May God, who has brought us from death to life, fill you with great joy. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. That concludes our worship for today. Pray that you will have a great week, that God will use you, that God will be with you and protect you and that you will indeed remember to seek a shelter, to go seek, head for shelter, <laughs> seek a place that's safe. Be with God's people when you can, find ways to do that creatively, and make sure that you spend plenty of time in prayer and with the scriptures. Goodbye.